All right, so let's have a look at some uh, kind of more advanced curve sketching skills, I suppose. So let's say we had this kind of uh, equation here, or function, right? Y equals the x squared uh, of ln x. So I guess the way that we can think about this is, well, first of all, what do each of these individually look like? Because it's going to be influenced by what they look like. All right, so y equals x squared, that's easy enough. That's a parabola. Y equals ln x, a little bit trickier. Uh, if you're not too familiar with it, it looks something like this. Something to consider when you look at log graphs is that you can never take the log of a negative value. So what that means is on the left side of your graph, you won't have any negative values. Uh, it will just look something like this. Right? Now, the sort of x value that you take to get um, your x-intercept is going to be 1 in this situation. So if you uh, take the log of 1, you're going to get 0, right? And so we can think about, all right, well, what's some combination of this? For those of you in extension 1, you know that when you multiply graphs together, you can actually look at the manipulations, how they work. So this is bugging me a little bit. That should probably be more like that. Um, yeah, something like that, right? <coughs> but, okay, well, how can we use calculus? This is what really now. How can I use calculus to do this, right? Well, um, the, the order that it kind of goes on, we think about what are the sort of key features that we want to look at. You want to look at... Uh, x and y intercepts, you want to look at stat points, and you want to look at points of inflection as well, right? So stat points and then points of inflection. So let's have a look at some of these. Um, so let me get my eraser and we'll have a look at x and y intercepts. X and y intercepts are going to be interesting. I mean, you look at these x and y intercepts here, and this one only has one. This one has another one. So that's kind of an indication of where x and y intercepts are going to be. Right, so if I take let y equal to 0 for x ints, and then we say, OK, well, either x squared ln x is equal to 0. And then so you have two situations, right? We've got either x squared is equal to 0 or ln of x equals 0, right? And so x would equal to 0 here. And in this situation, well, we really looked at what the y-intercept occurs, that occurs when x equals to 1. The thing you have to be careful of, though, when you look at particularly the log graphs, there's actually a domain restriction, and that is that x has to be greater than 0. Or more specifically, x can't equal to 0. And so this one, right, we actually reject this solution. It's outside the domain. Right? So that's something to be aware of. Your graph will not be... Uh, present at x equals 0. Right? It's undefined because if you try and put x equals 0 into this, this works, but when you put it into this, you're going to get a math error, so it's not going to work. So just keep that in mind. So we reject that solution over there. Let's get going. Stat points. So we'll take the derivative. This one we have to do a bit of work. I have to use product rule here. We can just do that really quickly. So we want v u dash plus u v dash, and so that's going to be ln of x times 2x plus x squared times the derivative of this is 1 on x. Okay, so that gives me 2x ln of x. And this is going to be x here. Okay. Interesting. And let y dash equal to 0 for stat points. So we've got what, 2x ln of x plus x equals to 0. And again, same thing here. Whenever you are trying to sort of solve for these variables equals 0, never divide by variable because you actually lose solutions there. But factorize. So 2 ln of x plus 1 equals to 0. And let's go again. So where should I go? Maybe I should go to the, this side here. Right, so I've got x equals to 0 or 2 ln of x plus 1 equals 0. Same thing here, we reject this one for the same reason, so you don't have to worry about that. 2 ln of x equals to negative 1, ln of x equals to negative half. So x is going to... Oh, how do you solve an equation like this? Well, this is an interesting one, because the way that you do it is you use these inverse operations. So we raise both sides of the power... Um, well, base e, because this is log base of e here, right? So that's going to be 
uh, x is equal e to the negative half. Okay? So far, so good. What is that as a decimal value, just out of curiosity? 0.6, so that gives us an indication of where we're going. Okay, x equals to 0.6 something. All right, so far, so good. All right, so that's our stat points. So I'll just test that really quickly. So x, y dash, 0 0.60, that's zero. I'll we'll just test one and, I can't test zero, funnily enough, because that's not defined, but I can test 0 0.1 maybe. Let's try that, one. So I'm going to use 2 times 0 0.1 times ln of 0 0.1 plus 0 0.1. Yeah, negative 0 0.36. So what kind of point do we have going on here? This is going to be, therefore, there is a min at, let's leave it as exact because it's a bit nicer, e to the negative half. And if I put it back into this one, oh, well, that's going to be e to the negative half all squared ln of e to the negative half. I can actually simplify that. That looks terrible. <laughs> Sorry. That's just really bad. Uh, let's simplify it out. That's e to the negative half. And that's going to be, if you use your power rules, we can multiply those together. e to the negative 1 times oh, an ln of ln of negative e to the negative half is actually just negative half. <laughs> Sorry about this working out here. That's just going to be negative 1 over 2e because that's just 1 over e. Yeah. <laughs> Not my finest work, but you get the idea, right? All right, let's keep going. So, um, y double dash now. So what we can do here is then we can say, all right, what's the second derivative? Well, I'm going to have to use our prog rule again. So I'll do that for this guy. So if this guy is 2x ln x plus x. So vu dash plus uv dash. So I've got ln of x times 2 plus 2x times 1 on x. Plus now the derivative of this guy is just 1. That's a nice easy one. And so what's that? 2 ln of x plus... Oh, that's interesting. That just simplifies to three, I think. Okay. And let y double dash equal to zero for points of inflection. And so we're gonna get two of ln x plus three equals zero. Ln of x equals to negative three on two, actually. Again, not going to be the nicest number. <laughs> Raise both sides to base e. So you're going to get x is equal to... If, just to clarify that, by the way, the reason why that works is because if you go e ln x equals to e negative 3 and 2, right, this simplifies that to just x. That's why that works, right? So it's x equals e to the negative 3 and 2, which is... What is that? 0.2 something. Oh, that's going to be weird. Interesting. Huh. Alright, uh, and again we test. Here's the table method here. So we've got x and y double dash. That's 0, we'll test um, 1 and 0 0.1 I guess. And put it back now into this guy here. So we've got, that's going to be 2 times 0, that's going to be 3 again. And this one will be... negative 1.6. So therefore there is a point of inflection at, what is this, e to the negative 3 and 2. Oh, you guys are going to love this one. Sucks you back into this guy. Oh, I wish I could come up with some more nice examples. Let's simplify it over here. So, so e to the negative 3 on 2 all squared times ln of e to the negative 3 on 2. Well, that just becomes negative 3 on 2, so that's okay. And this just becomes e to the negative 3. So that's just going to be 3 on 2e cubed. Okay. All right, cool. So, after all that, what's going on? <laughs> Let's put it together. 
And I think like you've done all the hard work now, now it's just kind of putting it together, right? Keeping in mind that this shape is going to look something like a parabola combined with a log graph. So let me draw my axes first, and we'll go from there. All right, so I'm um, not sure what I had here earlier, but that definitely should be a negative there. So sorry if I made that mistake. All right, so <laughs> what I've done is I've removed some of this stuff, but basically what we need to look at and focus on, that should, yeah, that should be a negative there, uh, because it's negative three on two times that. Uh, we've got these points here, and we want to focus on what's this going to look like now. We know we have a minimum at this point here, and we calculate that roughly at 0 0.606 or something like that. And I think it's helpful to get more of the decimal values rather than, than the sort of exact values. Like when I'm writing the coordinate, I'll write the exact values. But if I'm trying to sketch it, I'll get the uh, decimal values here, right? So for example, this one here, negative 0 0.184. So we're doing some pretty small numbers, negative 0 0.184. This is our minimum. I want to mark that in here. So let's put one maybe here, for example. I'll try to make this a little bit longer. Let's put one maybe here, right? And I know I'm going to have a minute 0 0.6, that's maybe roughly here, right? Oh, keep in mind that my x-intercept occurs at, I don't know why it says y equals to 1, x equals to 1. Right. So that's going to be a point that exists there and a point that exists maybe here, right? Cool. So far, so good. So it's going to be something like this. So this point here is our minimum, 0 0.606. Well, actually I should use the um, exact values here. So e to the negative half and negative one over two e. All right, so far so good. That's gonna be like that, a little bit there, okay? And then what else do we know? We know there's a point of inflection and that's gonna occur here. And what is that as a numerical value? Let's have a look. So that's, that one is e to the negative three on two. So e to the negative 3 on 2, that's about 0 0.2 something. And then this one here, negative 3 on 2 e cubed. That's negative 0 0.07. So that's negative 0 0.07. That's significantly higher, so probably up here more. Now, what is that? That's a point of inflection. Okay. And when you uh, substitute into your table earlier, you saw that it was going from a negative concavity to a positive concavity. So that means it's going to be something like this. Remember that, like, sort of negative concave down parabola to a more concave up parabola, so something like that, right? So really, the point of inflection is probably more like this at that point, right? So that's our point of inflection. So that's e to the negative 3 on 2 and negative 3 over 2e cubed, right? That's our point of inflection there. Right, so far so good. And then what we can do, right, well, what's happening now? Well, if there's no other staging points, no other points in cavity, then what we can do is just, well, there's only one thing that can happen. This gradient has to maintain its course. It won't change the gradient. It won't change from cavity. It will look something like this. The other way we can test that out is by actually substituting back into this original one. We can test a certain x value. So let's say we say, okay, what's happening at x equals to 10, for example, we can check 10 squared times ln of 10 or something like that. You can see it's going off to these really high y values. So it's going to be shooting off to something like this. And that's how you can combine a log graph and a parabola as well, put together um, for this um, graph here. And just to emphasize, so this is kind of concave down, and then at some point it changes to concave up, and then it stays concave up as you go up to there. Let's have a look, actually, just curiously how close we were to that one. So let's go back. Not too bad, actually. If you have a look at it, that's our equation. Um, you can see that there is that sort of point of inflection uh, that occurs here, right? So there's your point of inflection here, and there's your minimum value, which we found as well. So that's what the kind of, this kind of graph would look like here. Uh, y because x squared ln of x. Okay.